All right, so let's get through this one game, or actually these two games. Let's talk about this Miami game first. I thought this game was very telling. So one thing I would say is the referees were definitely on the Knicks side, especially towards the latter part of the game, the end of the game. They were getting every single call. I remember there was one call where Miami, they tipped the ball, and it went off the player's hand the Knicks player hand and they didn't even like replay it and check it and there was like two minutes left in the game like that part that is something that you need to check literally every player is saying a touchdown and the rest are like nope 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 continue play and then there was the two other stupid plays that they gave the uh the Knicks as well so you could tell that they wanted the Knicks to win this and another huge takeaway of this game if Jimmy Butler's here they win guys Miami wins this game with Jimmy Butler and imagine they had Tyler Hero and Victor Oladipo. I don't know if Miami's full team is there with Victor, Tyler, and Jimmy there. I think they're the best team in the East. I think they kind of just coasted through the season just to make it in the playoffs. And then now they turn it on. A lot of teams are doing that. Lakers did it. You know what I mean? Teams are just coasting through the regular season and then switching their game plan and, and everything. As they get into the playoffs. That's what Miami basically did. They play as a team, guys. Anybody can score. My takeaway from this game is literally the, it came down to the calls, guys. And Jimmy Butler. If Jimmy Butler's there, Jalen Brunson doesn't go off like this. Because now he has a smaller defender on him. So that means he can get to his spots and get to his shots that he wants. When Jimmy Butler's on you as Jalen Brunson, you can't get through him. He's literally big. He's got five inches on you. Right? Almost three three to five inches and he's got like 50 pounds on him at least so he can body him up you're not moving him so it's tough to get shots on him as we saw in game one so he took advantage of a game two but i don't know i think jimmy comes back maybe game three because he's gonna have some rest now i think they play on friday so if he doesn't come back game three maybe game four but he started waving to the knicks fans when the game was over so i think he'll be back guys so they lose by six without Jimmy. So we all know if Jimmy were there, they win. But this is the team effort, guys. Literally everyone chipped in. That's what I like about this Miami team. It's a full team effort. Every t player on this team can do something. There's something that they're able to do, which is why I think they'll probably beat. Bo they can beat Boston, this team. They can beat Philly. And they certainly can beat the Knicks. Right now, my new favorite is Miami right now. I think they're the best team in the East right now. I'm not saying they have the best players, even though it's debatable with Jimmy Butler. But team-wise, in the East, Miami is the best team. As a team, like the word team itself, they're the best. But the best players on the team probably would be Boston, and then probably Philly. And then, I guess you can say probably, it'd be it's close with Miami and New York. Because you got guys injured on Miami. But I guess we give it to New York because of that. Uh, what else? Uh, and all you see Jimmy Butler's value when he's not there. Obviously, I said that. Uh, and then later in the game, Miami went four minutes without a bucket. They were up ten, I think, or eight. And then they let the Knicks overtake them and then beat them by six. So that's where Jimmy Butler comes in. You need a guy that can go get a bucket when you need it. Then that's what Jimmy does. So they really missed him in the last four minutes. And they only lost by six. That's the crazy part. Caleb Martin played well. Vincent played well. Those guys are good, though. Struss. Those guys are scorers. They look to score. Now, on the Knicks side, R.J. Barrett went on a quick start. Scored a quick 15 in the first. Then he slowed down. Julius Randle showed up. They needed him to. Jalen Brunson. That, see, that this is... All because Jimmy wasn't there. If Jimmy were there, this is probably down to like 18, maybe 20. Because Jimmy is on a force on defense, a straight force. He changes the whole game. So now you got these three guys going big, and then Hart does his usual. Almost gets a triple-double. So uh, my man Josh Hart played very well. But other than those four, you didn't really get much. So I think Miami's a better team. They play more together. They have more people that can do different things and score in different ways. Whereas the Knicks, you got one, two, three, four guys that can really score. That's it. Topin didn't give you anything. And even when he does play well, he doesn't give you 30, 40 points. 
So I think Miami wins this. They go back to South Beach. I have them winning game three, guys. And possibly game four, and we'll go back to New York. I think Miami in five. Actually, I'll be more respectful. Miami in six. And that's how we'll do that. Let's check the stats. So the Knicks shot the three a little better. Well, I mean, Miami shot almost 10 more than them. They made one more, but shot 10 more. So, I mean, that's fine. If you make more than them, it's fine. That's what, that's what you want to do. But it's that last four minutes when the fatigue hits. Who's going to be the guy to get the bucket? They didn't have that. That's what they were missing. Even if they had Oladipo, he would have been able to do it. Or even Tyler Hero. They have their three top scorers are gone, guys. I don't think you guys realize how bad that is. They lost a rebound game by 16 and only lost by six points, guys. That shows you how good they play or how well they play. Now, what else? Turnovers. And the Knicks had more turnovers. So, in other words, the Knicks had no business winning this game. They snuck away with one. That's, that's playoff basketball, man. That's what they did. They came in. They snuck away with the game. Now we go to Miami game two. Hostile environment, guys. All right, I want to see when they're playing again. Oh, they don't play till Saturday? So, wow, guys. So, they played Monday. So, Monday night, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, really, he has six days off. I expect Jimmy Butler there on Saturday, guys. And I, I expect the Heat to beat them on Saturday. And then we also got to wait till Saturday. I don't know. The Lakers play Wednesday. So, why do Miami... Why does Miami get such a long break? They played Sunday. Now they're not playing. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, never mind. They played Sunday. Then they played yesterday, which would be Tuesday. So then Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. So he has like five days off for game two, right? But for some reason, the Lakers play on Thursday and playing. Oh, I see what happens, because the Heat series started first. All right, that makes sense. I was wondering why they played sooner. So we'll see the Lakers game tomorrow. All right, that makes more sense. I love playoff basketball. It's just games on every day. Like, I love that. All right, so let's talk about this Lakers game. Where is it? Lakers-Warriors. So, I mean, initially, I, I mean, I, I, I'm sticking with the Warriors. Either way, I think because Joel Embiid won the MVP, I think that the Nuggets are going to win the championship. Usually the MVP doesn't win the, the championship. That's just the way it usually goes. So they gave it to Embiid. That makes me think that Jokic is going to win the championship this year. If, if it's not Jokic, obviously it's going to be LeBron or Steph. It's one of those three teams in the West. I'm, I'm convinced of it because, I mean... They're the best teams right now. And the only team that can compete with those three in the East would be Miami because of the way they play. They play as a team. And I don't even think Philly can do it. because I mean, Philly, they got some players and they got coaching. Philly can probably hang. I don't think they can beat anyone, though, in seven games. They'll probably steal a game or two. I can see that. But overall, they need, like, one more star, like, Big time star, like bigger star than Tobias Harris. I know they got Maxi, they got Harden, they got they got players, guys. They got some guys that can do things, but they still need one more guy that can just get her done, you know, anytime he wants. Like I'd feel much better if this team had like a Jimmy Butler or something, including what they had, you know. Then I'm saying this team can compete with anyone, but I think they're one player away. Same as Boston, they need one more guy. One more guy, like, on the level of Tatum and uh, Jalen Brown's level of scoring. I don't care what position it is, but they need one more guy on that level. And I think that's what they're missing. I think the Nuggets have those three guys. They got Jamal Murray, right, who had a shit game, and they still won by 10. Uh, who else? Uh, Michael Porter and then Jokic. They have a three. They have three legitimate guys that can score. And then KCP is knocking down shots, and then you have Gordon playing the four. I think they have the best lineup. They have a combination of size, strength, and speed and shooting, guys. I, I just think the Nuggets are the best team right now. We'll have to see if they win the entire thing, but team-wise, they're the best. 
Uh, and then I would say as a team, Miami's probably the second best team, guys. Not players, I'm saying team-wise. And then it's probably Golden State, and then the Lakers, and then probably Boston, then Philly, and then everyone else. That would, that would probably be my top. But let's see what happened with this game. So with this game, the Warriors looked better than the, the uh, Lakers, especially early. They made a lot more threes. They made a record. They hit 13 threes in the first quarter or half. It was a record, guys. I remember seeing it. Kind of crazy. And then they kind of slowed down. It seemed like guys like Clay Thompson didn't have legs later. They were shooting shots short. So that tells me they didn't have legs. They were tired. Uh, looks like the NBA is also rewarding LeBron James for the years in Cleveland, having to take all those L's to the Warriors. And then that first year in Miami where he took that L to Dallas. Let's face it, a guy like LeBron, he should have like seven championships, eight championships, man. Like, let's face it. But... He paid his dues. I think the league is just going to pay him off. If he doesn't win this year, I don't I don't know. Seems like this year it's a Jokic or LeBron year, guys. To me, I don't know. I think they're either going to reward Jokic or LeBron. If they reward LeBron, then you know it's for all the dues he paid from Cleveland and Miami, losing all those championships. So don't be surprised, guys. So I, I, my money's on the Nuggets. And the more I think about it, the Lakers, because of what I just said. And then the Warriors. Those are the only three I think are winning the championship. I don't think the East is winning it. We're seeing Boston have some cracks in the armor. Obviously, we don't think Philly can do it. And Miami, they just have the injuries, you know. They're, no one. It's not like we don't think they can't do it. It's just that we just got to see it. We got we to gotta see them put it together. But I think we should have opened our eyes. When they went through the Bucks. that's when we all should have been on notice with Miami. Like, they were a true team. Uh, honestly, I got the Warriors in six, but if the Warriors lose game two at home, I'm taking the Lakers in seven. I think the league's going to make this series go seven. So that's why I have the Warriors because they got the home field, the home court last game. So that's why I picked them. But I want the Lakers to win, but I think the Warriors will get them, but we'll see. Who knows? Maybe the NBA is like, Steph, you got your four. Let LeBron get his fifth. He paid more dues. And you just go from there. Let's face it. The Warriors still can win more. As long as they keep their core together. and Maybe add a player or two there. The Warriors still can make noise. So, LeBron, we don't know how much more noise this team can make. How many more years are they going to keep AD around? I think he's got one or two years on his contract. Same thing with LeBron. So... After this year, there's one year left. So it's like, I don't see them staying there. They're probably going to get shipped off somewhere else. I think LeBron wants to play till he's like 45. So he's going to be shipped around a few places. So we'll see. Uh, other than that, LeBron had a real conservative, quiet 20-point 20, 20 scoring game. Uh, did what he had to do mostly on defense. Him and AD were a force on defense. They were just protecting the paint and the rim. Helped defenses on point. Schroeder did a great job on Steph on those screens, chasing him around. D'Angelo Russell got going. Austin Reeves did his usual. Troy Brown had help on defense. Hachimura chipped in. They looked good last night, guys. Like, they, they looked good. The question is, are they going to be able to sustain it? Vanderbilt did a good job. These are just really good matchups. Like, I think they're... I didn't think they would match up well, but it's working out better than I thought. What the Warriors need to focus on is start getting Austin Reeves on Steph Curry. Start figuring out ways to screen Reeves to get the switch on the Steph because Reeves isn't good on the defense athletically. So I think that's a way that the Warriors can take advantage of the Lakers. Get Reeves on Curry so that he can get open. Because Russell's doing a great job on him, and so is Schroeder. Once they're on him, they're not neutralizing him, but they're making it tough on him. But whenever Reeves is on him, it's a guaranteed bucket. So if I were them, I'd look for any way to get Reeves on Curry. Scheming, screens, whatever. Curry had 27. Like Because of what they did, different bodies and the way they played him, he should have had way more, guys. But if you can hold him to 27 and Clay to 25, if you can hold them both under 30, you have a chance. 
if you hold Wiggins under 20 and those two guys under 30, you have a chance. So it's all about the defense. I think Wiggins might be neutralized in this series because you have Vanderbilt on him, who's a bigger guy, athletic guy. You got LeBron on Draymond. You got AD on Wig or uh, Looney, right? Looney had 23 rebounds, freaking rebounding machine. AD had, what, 23 rebounds as well. Both of them going at it, but AD is the more offensive player, obviously. Uh, they need more out of Looney, I'd say. I know he doesn't give much anyway. Draymond had a shit game. He said it himself on his pod. What else? Jordan Poole played all right. But let's talk about the last three possessions the Warriors had. They weren't even trying to score, guys. Jordan Poole, um, I think it was the three possessions Jordan Poole took the shot. Bad shots, too. Like It was bad. And I think one of them was a turnover. So the last three, four possessions, bad shots. Didn't even look like they were trying to score. But you're telling me that the Lakers weren't destined to win this game and this shit isn't rigged and scripted. Whatever you say, man. So, if this keeps going up the way it is, I think the Lakers have a chance to walk away. But if you look at this team right here, the Warriors, they have a lot of depth. A lot of guys that didn't show up. DiVincenzo didn't show up. Peyton could have done more. Uh, Poole did fine. So, we'll see. We'll see how they bounce back. <clears throat> I'm sticking with the Warriors unless I see something else. Uh, let's see here. Field goals. <laughs> Warriors shot worse. <clears throat> so the Warriors shot 53 three-pointers, guys. They made 15 more threes <clears throat> than the Lakers and still lost. Like, I don't know if you could shoot more than 53 threes, guys. They got, what, 16, 14 more shots at total? Like, it's like... You're supposed to win a game like that with all those shots more you have. More possessions. It's crazy, and they just didn't. Lakers get to the line way more. It's hard to get to the free throw line if you're shooting threes all the time. So, Warriors are the worst at playing defense without fouling, where the Lakers are one of the best at playing defense without fouling. And they're, the Lakers are the best at getting at the free throw line, where the Warriors are the worst. So, this is just a bad matchup. The Lakers might actually be able to beat this team in a series. We'll see, though. I don't want to get ahead of myself. It's only game one. Like I say, game one doesn't really mean shit. Game one is usually to get people to, like, over-pursue uh, on the bets. So we'll see. Uh, turnovers, same. Rebounds. Lakers out-rebounding them. That's what they got to keep doing, get more rebounds. And look at those blocks, guys. That's 10 blocks. That means that's 10 times. They stop them from scoring an easy basket, most likely. So, to keep with the blocks and rebounds. Lakers can win this. They got to make more threes, though. It's a, this is going to bite them. Shooting 24% is going to kill you. You got to shoot at least 35 40%. And I need you guys to make at least 12 to 15 to have a chance. They're, they're lucky the Warriors. I mean, they didn't shoot it that bad. They were 21 for 53 40%. They didn't even shoot that bad. Lakers just got to be more consistent. They're terrible at threes, but they got to just do better at that. Other than that, guys, I would say the Warriors would bounce back, take game two, and then we go back to L.A., and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.